Hey, I want to spend a little bit of time here addressing some of the of the requests from the class, which is to um, implement a score a scoring system and then also the start screen. Now, I've done that already, but we can certainly go through the process here. Uh, the first thing I, I do here, um, as far as the start screen is concerned, I uploaded a sprite. I looked it up. I think I downloaded this from the internet and then I went, um, I downloaded to my computer and then I uploaded the sprite. And I believe it was maybe in my downloads folder or in my pictures folder. Well, either way, I uploaded this from my computer. Um, the start screen is a sprite or the, the start button is a sprite. So it has code within it. And the code is fairly simple here. The first thing I do here is I place the sprite where it needs to be. Um, actually, let me do this. Notice, um, go to 0, 015. So I place the sprite there. Switch costume to start and show. Now, um, the reason I switched the costume is because I have two costumes. One of them is the actual start button. The other is the instructions. Move right, left, um, move to move. Use the right and left arrow to shoot. Use the space bar. So I and this I I just it's a text box. I clicked here on this text box, and I was able to write text. And I did two separate text boxes. There's a reason for for that. It's because when I used one, this shoot was right here. So I put them in their each separate box so that they could both be centered. Now, as far as the code goes, um, I create a clone of myself. That's going to be the instructions. When I start as a clone, I go to a slightly lower position. Notice it's still at x equals 0, but negative 80. And show and switch costume to instructions. So that gives me that. So here's the uh, actual sprite. And then I create a clone, which is the instructions. And I place the clones a little bit below. Now, forever, if I um, press the mouse, and that would be anywhere on the screen, really, I'm going to broadcast the message. Now, this is, here is important, the broadcasting of a message. If I go to events, you can broadcast messages. Now, basically, this is like, it's, it, is, it is what it is. You're telling the other sprites, hey, um, something happened. So when I click on the mouse, um, with the mouse, it's going to broadcast the message start, and then it will hide the start button. Now, in addition, when the here within the same sprite, if I receive the message start, so that's this block, then delete the clone, which is the instructions. Now, I do actually foresee a problem here. I hadn't uh, seen this, but if I press on the mouse, it it broadcasts it broadcasts the message start again. So that I hadn't um, actually um, witnessed because I hadn't done it. Notice I'm playing the game and then I press the mouse, it starts again because it broadcasts the message start. Uh, to maybe uh, get rid of that, we could potentially uh, there we can make a variable called the flag, and basically it lets you click the mouse once and then. It doesn't check this ever again. So we can make a flag. And this is one way of addressing this. So we're broadcasting the message start multiple times every time I click on the mouse. So I'm going to say that I'm going to make a variable called the, just a flag. I'm going to make it only for this uh, start button sprite. So I'll call this flag. You can call it started if you want. Actually, started would probably be better. Started. So uh, like a question, did you start already? I'm going to initialize when I click on the flag, I'm going to initialize started to zero. And then I'm going to say that if I click on the mouse and started equals zero. So I'll go to operators, grab it, and I'll put the mouse uh, as the first condition. If I click on the mouse and started it is equal to zero. So I'll go to variables. I'll grab the started variable 
I gotta go to operators and equals. If started is equal to zero, which it is to begin with. So if you click on the mouse and started equals zero, again, it will be because that's what it's set to when you first um, click on the flag. Broadcast start and then set started to something other than zero. It can be anything, I'll just set it to one. So I'll come in here, set started to one. Broadcast start, hide, so on and so forth. Now the reason this uh, prevents me uh, from resetting my screen. So notice I'm clicking on the mouse now and it's not broadcasting the message start anymore is because once started is set to one, it's never set back to zero and this condition is not met. Yes, you're clicking on the mouse, but started is not equal to zero. It's now one. So that alleviates that problem. This is one way of implementing a start screen. I prefer to do um, a sprite for the start screen. Um, there has been uh, some students in the past that work that kind of play with the backdrop, but it's it's a little glitchy sometimes playing with the background backdrop. So I rather uh, have a sprite. Now let's talk about how uh, this um, start brought the start message affects the other sprites. I don't want the spaceship to show unless we've started the game. So where before I had um, for the spaceship, I had this under a flag. So here I had a flag. This is what it used to be like. And let me see if there's anything else here. Oh, this was also under a flag. And let's talk about uh, this code here. Let me zoom out. So for the spaceship, we set its size 60%. Show the spaceship started off at 0, negative 150. This is then used to uh, move the spaceship left and right. We don't want to be able to do that unless we have started the game. So rather than use the flag, we're going to use the uh, received. When I receive start, we can um, show the spaceship and move it around. So I'll get rid of the flag here. Um, in addition here, this right here um, is for the clones. Oh, actually, I was this. Never mind. That was for the clone. Um, this right here, we could also put it under the uh, when I receive start. Not a big deal. Now, this lets you shoot. Now, this, when I click on the flag, I don't want, if I don't include this, when I click on the flag, the spaceship is going to be there. I don't want that to happen. I want it to, I want to hide the spaceship when the flag is clicked. That works great. Notice that um, a lot of the algorithms for the spaceship now will um, be activated when the, the start message is received. So like, like that. There we go. Now I can move the spaceship and shoot. Now um, there are also uh, there are also changes that I have to make. I'm going to get rid of this start flag. I don't want to show it. For the spaceship, I do very, basically the same thing. Where before, um, this um, basically creates my array, my my list of of x and y coordinates. It creates eight elements. Well, puts eight addi eight additional elements besides these first two. So that was used to be under a flag. And again, again, this used to be under a flag. I put it when I received the start. Make my list. Create my first. A batch of clones, my first formation right there. Um, also here, uh, this is checking to see if clone, when I've created nine clones, so if clone is bigger than nine, I wait at one and a half seconds and I create a new set of uh, clones by executing the new formation block. This is when I start as a clone. This is the, the, the code for the clone, meaning this doesn't have to change. When I click on the flag, I, I should set score to zero. That's not because score is showing up. So every time I click on the flag, it should go back to zero. Notice that the, the clones here um, are starting where the score is at. That's a little. 
Well, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that. But we've made our code in such a way that it's an easy change here. So how do I make it so that the clones don't show up here, right where the score is at? Well, I start my first clone a little, low, a little further down. And that's actually very simple to do now because we have a, co uh, a variable y start. Where do I want my first clone to start? Well, instead of all the way up to 160, maybe uh, 10 units down. Still showing up right where that, so maybe 40. Um, still a little there, so 135. There we go. That looks much better. Okay. Uh, finally, the score, and I mentioned this in class, but we can look at it again. To get the score, the score can be implemented either in the alien, uh, alien ship sprite or the spaceship sprite, because in both, you they, de they both detect each other at some point. Notice right here, if I'm looking at the spaceship sprite, it detecting it, it detects to see if it touched an alien ship. And this actually um, pertains to the bullet, which is a clone of the spaceship. So I can do it here, I can implement it here, or I can implement it um, here, which, which is where I've done it. For the alien ship, if you touch the spaceship, which is, um, I guess, really, you're touching a clone of the spaceship, a copy of it, the bullet, increase the score by one, and I set score to zero. Score is a variable that is uh, for both the spaceship and the alien ship. So it's not a variable that only belongs to one or the other. It belongs to both, to all sprites, really. That's convenient because maybe after your horse, your, your score hits 10, maybe you want the the spaceship to power up, you know, level up, whatever. So you would be, have access to the score variable in the spaceship sprite. Or maybe after your score is um, 50, you want the alien ships to change color and you have access to that variable in the alien ships uh, sprite. That's why it is convenient to make score a sprite that it, we call that a global variable. It, it, it lives across all sprites. So um, I'll look at start screen, I'll look at score, I'll post another tutorial video that has to do with motion um, and restricting motion, uh, like on a boundary. So this was something that came up in class. I think it's it's a good topic. And in addition, I haven't quite met all the requirements. I talked about having a parameter here. I'll provide a tutorial video on that as well.